They are both considered to be the greatest actors of their generation, both considered by contemporaries in the movie industry as the best without equal. Both Gary Oldman and Daniel Day-Lewis have had long careers, which both started in the 1980s, and have both embodied a wide range of characters, immersed themselves into a myriad of diverse personalities and roles that have electrified the screen with their gravitas and charisma. Both have starred in dozens of movies, yet never have their paths crossed. Never have they starred in a movie together, and yet throughout their careers and personal lives, a large number of many strange coincidences come to the fore, which link the two of them together. Both Oldman and Day-Lewis were born in London. Within a year, and also only a few miles from each other, Gary Oldman grew up in tough, working-class New Cross, in a house with an outside lavatory while Day-Lewis was born in Kensington, to a much more well-off family. His father was Cecile Day-Lewis. He was the Poet Laureate of England. A Poet Laureate is an honorary position appointed by the Queen and writes poems for special national occasions. Poet Laureate has to, uh, has to write one poem a year or for special occasions or festivals or it something. It could be one, it could be maybe three in a busy year. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. but uh, the, the, the fee, the fee for that was, was you could choose between a hundred pounds a year or a crate of dry sherry or something. So when we look at Day Lewis's background, we can see clearly his was a privileged upbringing and very different to Oldman's, and yet both had problems with their fathers, which have both gone on to say have haunted them and inspired them to channel their inner demons in intense performances. Oldman's father was an alcoholic who would beat up his mother and left the family home when he was only seven years old. These experiences went on to inspire Oldman's directorial debut, the superb and intense Neil by Mouth. When Oldman was acting, he would use memories of how his father had left in order to transport himself to the most troublesome places. He would bring onto set the pain bag, a collection of photos and artifacts belonging to his father. He said of this, I mean it is very simple. If you break it down, I miss my dad and so if I had to be sad, I would think about my father and it would make me sad. My dad was a pipe fitter, no welder, and he used to get, uh, he used to get contracts abroad in the West Indies. And um, he was in Jamaica and um, he had an affair there and ran off with the, he left my mum, you know. Um, I was, uh, Eight and um, 67, and we were in a van on the way to Montego Bay, on the way to the airport. And um, the Hello Goodbye came on the radio, and I was singing along to it. And the guy who was driving the, the, the van was kind of smiling at me. You know, it was kind of amazed that I knew all the words. Mm. My dad was in the back, with the, in the back of the van with my mum, and he said, um, rather sort of proudly, he said, "Oh, he knows, he knows all the words." And that was the last time I saw him. I saw him for one night when he came back to get his stuff, and I never saw him again for 13 years. Yeah. And I think it's kind of ironic. You say goodbye, and I say hello. Yeah. So every time I hear that song. It takes me right back. Daniel day Lewis's father, Cecile, died when he was 15 years old. A year later, the impact of this trauma led day Lewis to take an overdose of migraine tablets. He was released from psychiatric hospital after convincing doctors he was fine, and later said it was the greatest performance of his career. How long was he ill, Daniel, before he died? Was it... um, he was ill pretty consistently for about uh, nine years, I think, oh, before dear. he died. I mean, not all the time, but one thing led to another. And um, I think I was probably about five years old when he was, uh, as I remember him, as a, as a healthy man. Mm. And, and you never really, you say, got to know him as a buddy? Or... Not, not a, well, not in, I mean, in a way that you know people without speaking to them, of course. And uh, in some respects, uh, he was a very affectionate man, but, um, but distant also. Um, by necessity, I think, because of his work. 
Um, perhaps because of his greater age also it made it harder. I don't know, but, um, but uh, now I would love to be able to speak to him. Indeed. The death of his father left him with a painful sense of unfinished business. Talking of Cecile's worries about his behaviour, Day Lewis said, I feel my father was preoccupied with whether I'd survive as a human being. Daniel Day Lewis once claimed to have seen the ghost of his father whilst on stage playing Hamlet, which led to Day Lewis to quit acting on stage. The story goes that Day Lewis got to the scene where the Shakespearean character speaks to his father's ghosts before inexplicably collapsing into sobs and walking off, never to appear on stage again. Day Lewis was such an effective method actor that he somehow managed to summon his own father's ghost on the very stage. Day Lewis has since attempted to explain this. He confusingly stated in 2012, I may have said a lot of things in the immediate aftermath, he told Time magazine. And to some extent, I probably saw my father's ghost every night. Because, of course, if you're working in a play like Hamlet, you explore everything through your own experience. He continued, that correspondence between father and son, or the son and the father who is no longer alive, played a huge part in the experience. So yes, of course, it was communication with my own dead father but I don't remember seeing any ghosts of my father on that dreadful night. Another breakdown followed the death of Daniel day Lewis's agent in 1994. He once stated, If I weren't allowed this outlet of acting, there wouldn't be a place for me in society. Both Oldman and day Lewis appeared in breakout movies in mid-1980s, which then jettisoned them to stardom. Gary Oldman played Sid Vicious in Alex Cox's Sid and Nancy, and Daniel Day-Lewis played Johnny Burfoot in My Beautiful Laundrette. Gary Oldman was originally offered the part of Johnny Burfoot. He seriously considered the role, and at the time he had only done television work. He read through the script, but Oldman was unimpressed and felt the dialogue was inauthentic. The role then, of course, went to Day-Lewis, who up to that point had only had small parts in Gandhi and Mutiny on the Bounty. And now you may dismiss, sir. Uncannily enough, Daniel Day-Lewis was originally considered for the role of Sid Vicious in Sid and Nancy, so says director Alex Cox. It is unclear whether or not Day-Lewis passed on the role or not, but we believe the director probably chose Oldman over Day-Lewis due to his background and his previous television performances such as in Mike Lee's working class drama Meantime. So in a parallel universe, both actors could have easily appeared in each other's first big movies at the start of their career. And strangely enough, I reckon in that parallel universe it would have worked and they both would have given great performances in each other's roles. Daniel Day-Lewis's role in My Beautiful Laundrette garnered him considerable critical acclaim, which led him to his Oscar-winning role of Christy Brown in My Left Foot, and then on to later films such as The Unbearable Lightness of Being, The Last of the Mohicans, The Age of Innocence, and In the Name of the Father. Oldman calls the sensation in Sid and Nancy in 1986, and then a year later as gay playwright Joe Orton in Prick Up Your Ears. Oldman then moved to Hollywood where he struggled to make a name for himself until he got the part of Lee Harvey Oswald in Oliver Stone's JFK, which raised his profile and helped him to get the part of Dracula in Francis Ford Coppola's big budget epic. Strangely enough, as before, both actors were in contention for the role of Dracula. Francis Ford Coppola originally wanted Day Lewis to play the Count, but Day Lewis had to turn it down due to other commitments. Luckily enough for Oldman, basically a role reversal of what happened earlier with My Beautiful Laundrette. Daniel Day-Lewis had played the role of Dracula before. He played the part on stage. Originally, it was performed as a Christmas stage show in 1984 with Day-Lewis as the Count Dracula and recent Doctor Who Peter Capaldi as Jonathan Harker. It was such a huge success that it was performed again in 1985, but with a different cast. 
Both have loved and left behind a trail of beautiful women. Both allegedly have had an affair with American actress Winona Ryder. They Lewis after they were both cast in Scorsese's 1993 film The Age of Innocence and Oldman the year before when he and Ryder were in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Gary Oldman has been married five times. He was briefly married to Kill Bill star Uma Thurman, who said of him, it takes a special kind of woman to put up with him. Gary Oldman's first wife, actress Leslie Manville, recently co-starred with Daniel Day-Lewis in Phantom Thread. She was nominated for an Oscar for her performance as well as Day-Lewis, who was of course up against Gary Oldman for Best Actor all in the same year. Of course, Oldman went on to win the Academy Award for his performance of Winston Churchill in The Darkest Hour. Oldman and Manville met while acting at London's Royal Court Theatre and wed in 1987. They later both starred in 1989's The Firm, which featured another super intense performance from Oldman and which is probably the most authentic movie about football hooliganism ever made. Oldman and Manville had a child, Alfie, in 1989, but Oldman left when Alfie was only three months old. Day-Lewis has been linked with numerous actresses, Julia Roberts and the aforementioned Winona Ryder. Other gossip has linked him with the singer Sinead O'Connor and the actresses Greta Shaki and Juliette Binoche. For six years, he had a fiery relationship with the beautiful French actress Isabelle Ajani, to whom he wrote wax-sealed letters. Day-Lewis is reported to have ended the affair by fax shortly before she gave birth to his child. He then dated fitness instructor Daya Pichardo and the two lived together in Manhattan. In the mid-90s, he met Rebecca Miller, the actress daughter of another literary giant, US playwright Arthur Miller, on the film set of Miller's play, The Crucible, for which Arthur Miller had written the screenplay. They married on impulse in 1996. Miss Pichardo was still living in Day Lewis's apartment and discovered what had happened only when a friend, on hearing that Day Lewis had married, rang to congratulate the suitably mystified Pichardo. Both Oldman and Day Lewis have sons that are now working as male models. They even shared the catwalk together recently. And that's about it. Two of the finest actors of this generation with so many parallels in both their careers and private lives. Gary Oldman starred in the recently released Laundromat with Meryl Streep and is currently working again with Darkest Hour director Joe Wright in the forthcoming film The Woman in the Window, co-starring alongside Amy Adams and Julianne Moore. Daniel Day-Lewis's last film was Paul Thomas Anderson's Phantom Thread, after which he announced he would be retiring from acting. Day-Lewis has talked about retiring before, but insisted that this time the decision is final. He went on to say recently, what has taken over in the past is an illusion of inevitability, but it's settled on me and it's just there. Not wanting to see the film is connected to the decision I've made to stop working as an actor, but it's not why the sadness came to stay. That happened during the telling of the story and I don't really know why. I dread to use the overused word artist, but there's something of the responsibility of the artist that hung over me. He added, I need to believe in the value of what I'm doing. The work can seem vital, irresistible even, and if an audience believes it, that should be good enough for me. But lately, it isn't. I knew it was uncharacteristic to put out a statement, but I did want to draw a line. I didn't want to get sucked back into another project. All my life, I've mouthed off about how I should stop acting, and I don't know why it was different this time, but the impulse to quit took root in me, and that became a compulsion. It was something I had to do. Even though he sounds serious, I can't help thinking that Daniel Day-Lewis will someday change his mind and return to acting, just one more time. I doubt if he could resist it. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.